This week it's time for Spooks and Ghouls as Rhea and I are headed down to Marysville for the Halloween Howl. Then we visit the 26th Annual American Heritage Festival at the Dow James Park in Tooele Valley. What's that you say? Well, it's a place where the sights and sound of the Old West come alive. Finally, Restein visits a spooky place of his own in Halifax, Nova Scotia, as he takes us to the graveyard of over 100 souls lost on the Titanic. It's all scaring your way right now. At Your Leisure is next. It's a little bit spooky here in Circleville. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. Hi, welcome to At Your Leisure. I'm Chad Booth. And I'm Rhea Rossi Booth. And we are hanging out here in Circleville, Utah, uh, over at uh, Butch Cassidy's Hideout. And we're at the Halloween Howl, which is what Paiute County does every year. And it's spooky. It's spooky, and it grows every year. This is an ATV ride that runs up into the mountains through the day. You circle around through Marysville and you come back here for dinner and a costume party contest. Oh, it's big time costume party. Yeah. It, is, it couldn't be a more perfect, crispy, sunny, beautiful fall day. That's true. So welcome aboard. Let's find out a little bit about where we're headed to. So today we're here at Butch Cassidy's Hideout in Circleville, Utah, and we're here for the Halloween Hound. So every year in October, we meet here at Butch Cassidy's Hideout in Circleville um, on the Saturday closest to Halloween, and we have a, a great ATV ride, usually 60, 70 miles, something like that. We kind of do a, a, a lowland travel, um, so we stay out of the snow and people aren't freezing to death. Then we come back here and we have a full-on costume contest. People decorate their rigs. Uh, you know, we, we do a, a bunch of prize drawings. We do a poker run during the, the event. Um, just generally have a great time. One of the cool things about the Halloween Howl are the people that put it on, like Kelly, who owns Butch Cassidy's Hideout. She just can't help herself go over the top with food. So there's breakfast in the morning, dinner in the mid-afternoon, and it's really just amazing. Everybody that comes down here raves about the food and the camaraderie that comes out of this event. So what about October? Well, it's always a little bit of the roll of the dice, but there's beautiful riding, and we're at 72 degrees today. Very little snow, no precipitation. It's a great ride today on the Paiute Trail. Now, we're holding the event at Butch Cassidy's this year, which is roughly two and a half miles from Butch Cassidy's boyhood home in Circleville. And you may or may not know that it went under a massive restoration compliments of the county and the city and state parks. And it's been a full-on preservation project. Great place to make a side trip to on this Halloween Howl for 2019. Don't eat mine, eat your own. <laughs> okay, that so, looks so good. So when you start out doing a, a big Halloween ride, you're gonna be out for the whole day, you do have to start with a good, healthy Halloween breakfast, which we've done here yeah. at Butch Cassidy's Hideout. Yeah, this is a howling good breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna wait. be saying that a lot today, aren't we? <laughs> right. Well, right now it's time for us to slip away from here and go to our weekly travel adventure. We are at Tooele at the rendezvous, the Tooele rendezvous. I have one more show after this. This is my 32nd show that I've done this year. So I'll have 33 shows when I'm all done this year. The beads that I'm allowed to sell uh, will range between 200 and 800 years old. These are first generation beads. They're not replicas. They are, they are the real thing. 
Very, very rare, very hard to find beads. I love them. I love history. They have traveled three, four continents and across the centuries to get here. Thank you. The business is called the Camp Canteen. What we serve is fresh brewed root beer and cream soda called Bison Brew. We do about 10, 12 events a year. Been doing it for uh, 20 years. It's our 20th season doing it. The Rendezvous Group becomes a family. Uh, we've been friends with a lot of these people for 20 years. Uh, we're definitely a family. I'm an attorney ordinarily. I'd rather do this than practice law, but uh, I have everybody walks away happy from here. You can't say the same thing about the practice of law. So look, look at that little one right there. She's she's enjoying the root beer and uh, just uh, you know seeing people happy. It's great when people say, "Oh, I've been coming for 20 years. This is what I look forward to." And we have that all the time. I'm dancing inside like crazy, listening to it. And I've got ancestors over there that, you know, I mean, it's thrilling to be able to listen to the songs that are being sung and, and, and just the teachings that are being taught. You know, it's just, for me, it's just kind of a lifelong dream to be able to be out here and enjoy this and teach the kids when they come out. You know, and speak a little Shoshone with them and teach them things, so it's fun. We do a lot of traveling to different rendezvous and stuff to sell jewelry. I make, the stuff that I make is more traditional. It's uh, old style, not the newer kind of jewelry. I got introduced to this stuff uh, back in 1983. I went to Fort Bridger as, a, as actually as a Boy Scout and, uh, and fell in love with it. Fell in love with the Native, Native American culture. It's a passion I can't explain. It's, it's, it's a pre-1840s era, the Native American stuff. I do a lot of, of uh, bead work, quill work, you know, salt porcupine quill work. But to share that opportunity, that craft, that, lo that lost craft with others is huge. You know, this whole event is actually called the Festival of the Old West. So it consists of the Twila Mineral Rock and Gem Show, the uh, Twila Mount Man Rendezvous, and then the Pandos Native American Pow Wow. And to have three entities like that put together, yeah, man, it's, it's amazing. Free of charge to the public. I mean, huge. There's a little place on a Utah map Where I was raised, where my heart's at Where the sagebrush grows wild and high And the stars come out at night Oh, there ain't nothing like Being raised in the basin with a Ute reservation Skin starvation, that Duchesne County life on vacation, I never ask, are we there yet? Because my daddy makes sure each stop we make is at Eagle's Landing. They have such cool things for kids, like a petting zoo. They have the cleanest bathrooms on earth, and daddy doesn't freak out pulling up to the pumps, because they're really big and he says it's the best gas in the world. And you can get your tired fits, like we had to. Oh, and their food is so yummy. Eagle's Landing is so much fun, I don't care if we ever get there. It's time to save big during the Yamaha Let's Ride sales event with as low as 2.99% APR for 36 months, plus up to $4,000 customer cash on the industry's hottest models. So see your local Yamaha dealer today for huge savings. Then, let's ride. Get your new Yamaha at Stedman's Recreation. Ride hard, play hard. This What's New segment is brought to you by Tunex. Hunting season's here. Is your rig ready? Come and see us. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. My name is Anthony Lujan with Smoke Ain't No Junk Barbecue. Today we're gonna be cooking up a fatty roll. It's a unique twist of a combination of meats and a style of hamburger you'll enjoy. We're gonna get that prepped, get it on the smoker, and show you how it's done. 
And first thing you do is you make a bacon weave. And pretty much you take your favorite bacon. What I do is I split it up into equal amounts. So we got this bacon all laid out. And first thing you do is you kind of fold the first layer back, every other one. Then you're gonna come in with another piece of bacon and lay it in there. And you're gonna weave it over the top of that one. Now we got the bacon weave all laid out here. Now we're gonna move on to the stuffing part of this. We got some sausage, premium pork sausage is all you need. Gonna insert that into the pan here. In the pan, I got a little bit of jalapenos and onions. Got the pork in here, and then we're gonna add some ground beef here. I like to use ground beef that runs a little on the leaner side just due to the fact that the bacon and the pork sausage that we have in here add a lot of fatty contents and all the oils you need. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mix the pork and the ground beef together, and I use a 50-50 mix. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda get this on the weave here. We're gonna lay it all flat, make sure it's even. That way it all cooks evenly. The barbecue rub today we're gonna be using is Plowboy's Barbecue Yardbird Rub. Don't be shy, don't use it like salt and pepper. You make sure you lay it on nice and thick. Barbecue rub is meant for flavor. You wanna add as much flavor as you can to your product until pretty much you can't see any of the meat left. As you see that I got complete coverage of the roll there. We're gonna move on to the next phase and we're gonna add the cheese. I like to use shredded cheese because you can get it a lot more even versus chunks. So I lay that cheese out there. We wanna make sure we get complete coverage. Once again, we're doing complete coverage because we want it to cook evenly. We're level, we're flat. We're ready to roll it. This is the most difficult part of the fatty roll. We got bacon. Bacon does not like to get rolled. So let's, let's see what we can do here. We're gonna roll this pretty much into a log. As you can see, take your time, wiggle it a little bit, tuck the edges in, and there we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more of this rub to the outside for some color and flavor. Get that all rubbed down. Once again, we're not being shy about it. We're laying it on thick. And there we have it. Let's get this fatty in the smoker. We got the smoker turned up to 275 degrees. We're gonna put this in here. Once again, we're cooking to temperature, not time. We're gonna cook this up to 165 degrees. There we go. And we'll see you in about an hour. Alrighty guys, we're gonna pull out our fatty. We cooked it up to 165 degrees. We're gonna pull it out, slice it up, get it on a bun with some barbecue sauce, and we'll enjoy it. All right, here we go. Get ready for this. I got my nice sharp blade. Let's give it a cut it and let's see what happens. There we go. We got the cheese and the deliciousness. Look at that, guys. Put it on our bun with a little bit of barbecue sauce here. This is Carolina Bay sauce here. Um, vinegary, tangy, sweet. I'm gonna put that on the top of the bun here. We're just gonna pour a little bit on there. Gonna slice off about a quarter of an inch or a half inch. Put it on our bun here. And there it is. Your classic pork and hamburger patty. Fatty is what it's called. Let's give it a taste. Oh, that's heaven right there. My name's Anthony Lujan with Smoke Ain't No Joke Barbecue. We'll be right back with At Your Leisure. For as long as I can remember, this is what we do. Rising early to take on the desert, owning our freedom, ripping our own lines in the sand, launching outside our comfort zone, chasing our friends to the horizon, and then back to the campfire. We're built for good times that last forever. But we are never able to get enough. This is what we do. Every weekend, every month, every year, we ride Can-Am.
Welcome back to At Your Leisure at the Halloween Howl. Now, a big part of this, who is that? Who is that guy? Oh, he's always in our shots. Always. <laughs> Everywhere we go in the state, that guy shows up and it gives Rhea the bunny ears. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we are back at the, uh, the uh, Halloween Howl, and we are just getting ready for the costume contest. This is part of the fun festivities after you come off the trail is everybody puts on a costume and they pick a winner. Some people even go to the trouble of decorating their rigs, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, it's totally cool. So who's going to win? Who thinks they're going to win? Let's find out. We love the Halloween hell. It was way fun last year, and it was a blast. That was the first time that we've been to that one. And the ride was great. The people were great. Lots of nice people. Beautiful country. Yes, and the costume contest was awesome because we won. Uh, at the costume contest, we were off the, uh, the Christmas vacation. We were Cousin Eddie and Catherine, his wife Catherine. Well, I think it's appropriate for the whole family. Um, there was kids there at the Halloween Howl, and people were handing out candy on the ride. So if you pulled over and stopped to take a break, People that passed by you, they had candy and they'd hand it out and vice versa. So that yep. made it fun. But dinner was awesome. Dinner was really good. Dinner was really good. Yes. yes. Dinner was really good. They always put on a good dinner, the jamborees. Yes, the jamborees, the Halloween how, always a delicious dinner. We got friends, family. There's a couple of new friends that are coming down this year that are going to go with us. And all ride together and a big group and have a, and it's kind of nice how the Halloween Howl does uh, where you're on it kind of do your ride at your own pace and do your own thing as long as you follow the cones you stay on the trail that's no problem and uh, but yet we can stop when we want or just have a good time while we're riding yes that's right you don't yes. have to eat anybody's dust we definitely will keep going it was a lot of fun yes absolutely well <clears throat> Not to be outdone, we decided to enter the contest ourselves. Rhea decided to go as Rhea, the host of At Your Leisure. And then he, Chad, decided to go as me with a little bit of extra weight on me. Fat Rhea. <laughs> I think he looks right. just like me. This is why we're not... 50 pounds like Thanks a me. lot, thanks. This is why we are not standing there in the winner's circle line, okay? <laughs> but right now, it's time for us to go to our trailhead adventure. We're in the loser circle. That's good. <laughs> I'm Reese Stein, at your leisure, at a cemetery in Halifax, Nova Scotia, among the spirits of more than 100 souls lost during the world's most famous maritime disaster. You know the story, you've seen the movie. I had no great interest in it. I didn't even see this, the movie. Well, everybody but Joan has seen the movie. On a moonless night, April 14, 1912, the Titanic struck an iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic. Only 750 survived, 1,500 died, and many of the dead were brought here to the Fairview Cemetery in Halifax. But the significant factor about it is that we have the largest site of Titanic victims buried there. There are 121 victims uh, who were, whose bodies were retrieved from the Atlantic. Three rows of headstones arc in the shape of a ship's hull on a gentle slope. Many are unnamed. Others tell stories. John Law Hume was a violinist in the famous band that continued playing through the sinking. He was found still in the uniform owned by an unfeeling employer. Two weeks after the Titanic sinking, uh, the company who hired John La Hume and the other members of the orchestra sent his family a bill for the, for the uniform. 24-year-old Everett Elliott stood by his post in the boiler room and is honored with the epitaph he showed once more to all the world how Englishmen should die. James Hutchinson was a cook, Henry Hodges a music dealer, Jacob Johansson found gold in Alaska, and John Chapman died with his bride on their honeymoon, Sarah refusing a seat on a lifeboat to remain with her husband. Herbert Cave was a bartender, Luigi Gotti managed the ship's restaurant, Harold Reynolds heading to Toronto to be a baker, and this J.W. Marriott was a ship steward, not the Utah hotel magnate. When James Cameron came here, he was moved by the story of Joseph Dawson and named his lead character Jack Dawson, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. Joseph Dawson was a 23-year-old coal trimmer from Dublin. Graveyards can be spooky, 
but the names, their poignant stories, give this place a haunting realism no movie can convey. I was quite moved by the, just the memorial itself and the affinity the people of Nova Scotia seem to have for uh, the, the, the victims creating this, this memorial and taking care of it. The most moving stone belongs to a 19-month-old baby unidentified for more than 90 years. After two misidentifications, modern DNA testing revealed the name of Sidney Goodwin, who died with his parents and five siblings. Sidney was first thought to have been one of Alma Polson's four children who died with their mother on that cold Monday morning. It's incredible sadness is so few people survived. Uh, at least so few bodies were found, but also a good feeling that they honored those people, including the ones who were crew members and, and who stuck with the ship as it went down. That was, that was what was special. Fly higher, go further, do more. Pursue your passion with Polaris, the world leader in off-road. Live wide open in a high-performance Razor, chase adventure on a legendary sportsman, or get more done with a hard-working Ranger. Enjoy savings up to $3,500 during the Polaris factory authorized clearance. Hi, my name is Spencer Cox. I'm the Lieutenant Governor of the State of Utah, and I'm the new spokesperson for Ride On. Ride On is a unique partnership between all the land managing agencies in the State of Utah to maintain trails, to advocate safety, to advocate wise stewardship amongst all of us who use these trails. And I'm doing it because trails matter to me. This is important for my children. I want them to be safe, and I want them to be stewards of the trail. If you would like more information, go to ohv.utah.gov. At Paris RV, you can count on five things. A huge inventory of RVs, great service, a large variety of accessories. Now, two locations and 14 brands of toy haulers. From Vortex, Striker, Attitude, Powerlight, Highlander, Thunderbolt, Boost, Hyperlight, Nitro, Sandsport, Salem Cruise Light, Iconic, Cyclone, and Sandstorm. Paris RV, 4360 South State, and now 5545 South State, and online at parisrv.com. Paris RV is Utah's number one volume toy hauler dealer. I, first of all, I cannot believe how delicious this food is in Paiute County. You, you guys, honestly, the Jamboree in Paiute County, they have the best food all the time. She's so excited she forgot to say <laughs> welcome back to At Your Leisure. Oh, welcome back to At Your Leisure. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we, we're riding all day, right? Yeah, uh, so we have had a lot of fun down here, but take a look at this spread for dinner. Ray, you can go back to... Uh, oh, can I have some of that? Oh, my gosh. No, you help yourself. The guy's right behind oh, you there. No, mm. no. That was so good. Okay, so uh, we have a lot of business to take care of before we're done, including figuring out who the contest winner is for the costume. But right now, we have some finished, unfinished business to do about our sticker winner. There were a lot of them around here today. Looks like Wayne is our contest winner this week with a license number of XO32KL and an AYL sticker. He wins the prize. Congratulations, Wayne. It looks like you're the lucky winner of a Mountain Series Camp Chef stove. Camp Chef is the best way to get your cooking done in the outdoors. Visit CampChef.com for more details. And it looks like you're also going to win a bonus $100 gas and gift card from our friends at Eagles Landing, which is the best place to get that real gasoline Clear 91. Okay, now let's take a look at our calendar of events. Next weekend, October 31st through November 2nd, is the Hump and Bump event down in Logandale, Nevada. 
The event features fairgrounds, trick-or-treating campfires, and of course, a great ride for full-size off-road vehicles. Then, on November 10th down in Mesquite is the Polaris Can-Am World Store Ride to kick off their riding season. So be sure to head to their events page on their website to register now. And just a reminder, we want you to do what we did today. Our staff got together at lunchtime over a pizza and called our congressman to tell him we support riding ATVs in national parks. There are a lot of organizations that are doing calling campaigns to try and get them to block that regulation from taking effect on November 1st. So do your part. The odds are against us. Let's win this one. Take some time with your friends and call. Now let's take a look at next week's show. Next week, Rhea and I are headed for an educational ride as we visit the Bryan Head area and learn about some of the aftermath of the fire that burned across nearly 71,000 acres of Utah's landscape. Then we're headed down to Richfield as the Friends of the Paiute Trail host their 2019 banquet, which this year will feature an introduction into their Hall of Fame, a worthy prize for one of our great friends, plus good food, and best of all, 100% of the fundraising goes back into the Paiute Trail system. Finally, we're headed out to the Bonneville Salt Flats for the most popular event on the salt as we visit 2019's Speed Week. I'm sure glad we took the time to tell you about next week's show and all that other stuff because we ended up in line for the root beer float dessert with the root beer and tea and the float. So we're just gonna have to go steal somebody's, <laughs> which might be a, might be an adventure in and of itself. So remember, there is adventure around every van. You just gotta get out there and create your own adventure. At your leisure. Yeah. Mauer, I think, still has some of his ice cream left. Let's go. <laughs> No, oh, it's not. Look at that. Here, here, here's to you. Mm. <laughs> you gotta put on, you gotta get a mustache. <laughs> <No>? <laughs>